it's me, Mushy, and you're, well, you're you. Hello, you. And we're here at Dark and Creepy Diamond Painting for a post review. This here was something that I kind of was working on sneaky behind the scenes that I wanted for you guys as a bonus March sort of completion. Um, beautiful artwork for you guys to help close out March. And what better way to do that than with an Irish Celtic pagan situation? So let's talk about this and get into the details. Come on. Okay, so um, let me grab my handy dandy notebook. <laughs> All right, you guys. So this canvas here I had in my personal inventory as IV1, which to me indicates Irish Viking painting number one in that category. I had it marked as a Celtic pagan mandala and the serial number is PSDS 5991. And in my personal stash, it was number 267. Uh, this was a 60 by 40 or 24 by 16 in inches, square drill with 48 colors. I purchased this canvas from Paint with Diamonds. Its current price is $49.99 on sale from $64.99 in case you're interested in grabbing this one for yourself. It does come in various sizes. Um, you get to kind of choose your size. This was again the 60 by 40. I started this on March 13th of 2024 and I finished it by the skin of my teeth on March 31st, 2024 at the 11th hour um, go. It was okay, fine. I finished it on April 1st at like 12.03 a.m. But you know what? I My watch is fast by three minutes. So we're counting it as a March finish and you can't stop me. So there's the that on that. Um... It took me a grand total of 65 hours and 51 minutes to finish this, and I rated it in my personal system a three star. Not just a one star like right here. Three of them. Three. Okay. I can't count. Three. 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 Can I? Why? Can I finger? Three. There. See, these fingers work. Three. There. Okay. Just had to check my fingers for a minute. I didn't want to work. Okay. Um... So let's start with the cons. Let's start with the negatory so we can end on a, I was going to say a pository, but that sounds too much like suppository. So we'll just go with positive note. We'll end on a bus. <laughs> we'll end on a suppository note. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Starting with the cons, the symbols F, R, and K all looked very similar on the canvas. They all had a similar color background and they were clumped together when I did, when they were together, they were clumped together. Those were some of these greens, the light, the medium, and the dark green. Those were the Ks, the Rs, and uh, the Fs. So there was a little pay attention to this area type of situation going on with that. Um, but if you, you know, were looking and paying attention, it was easy to see with a light board behind it. It's just that they, they had the similar color background and a similar shaped letter. And when you're tired, you sometimes you, you get a little fuzzy eyed. You know what I'm saying? So uh, if you get this one, take caution with those letters. Um, this did have significant gapping. The drills didn't like snap together in place well. And I attribute that to the drills being a little misshapen. Some were perfectly square. Some were more, you know, rectangular, a little slimmer and longer. Um, and, and really they didn't like fit. They weren't uniform enough to fit into place. You probably can't see it on camera really well. But like here's a significant gap some gapping right here, some gapping right here and right here. But also contributing to that could be the fact that I did not have a ruler that fit the measurements of this canvas. So I had to freehand it. Uh, I did use the checkerboard method for most of this. Uh, but then I got in a time crunch and I got lazy and kind of hurried. And so for this um, court, well, maybe quarter, quarter of the diamond painting this end from from like here over I did freehand and that could contribute to some of the gapping at least 
on this side where this is more uniform because of the checkerboard method. This side's probably just a little bit more of a hot mess, if I'm being honest. Uh, but part of that's me. Part of that's the drills not being uniform in size. Um, I did fight with popping drills. You you look at this canvas wrong and it's like it starts shooting drills at you and trying to hit you in the eye. Like the, the drills, you move this wrong or you touch it wrong. Um, you know, the drills just occasionally want to just ploop just pop off and run away. I can feel some of them now kind of sticking up a little bit. You can, if you notice, when I'm touching the canvas, I'm kind of trying to push some of them down a little bit. Um, there, are, there are areas where they're clustered in and they're kind of really tight. And so they want to pop out. And then there are some areas where there's gapping and, uh, you know, they want to just chill and, and be gappy. So there's that. Um, Let's see what else color and charting on this. I, you know, as you can see is not like perfectly symmetrical. If you divide this in half, uh, you'll notice that like the star has different coloring in the center. Like if you split it in half, it doesn't exactly match. Um, so the ring here is not exactly charted the same as the ring over here. Uh, the flowers look pretty similar, but there is some varying differences here in the coloring. So for this being a circular piece, you kind of want to see, you know, w one half be a mirror to the other half. And it just was not charted that way. And it kind of bugs me a little bit only because you know, I can see it and I know. Um, you see it better up close than you do further away. When you take a step back, uh, it does all come together and it doesn't stick out at you like it does me being this close to it. But just know if you're, if you're persnickety uh, like me and you like, when you have a canvas that, you know, makes sense if you split this down the middle that it should be symmetrical, this is not. This, this just is you know, the ring and uh, on the outside is not charted the same. The wreath, garland, whatever on the outside is not charted the same. The ivy, the clovers, uh, the greenery. Um, again, I did mention there were trashy drills and there was some weird trash. There were like what I thought was like these thick black, almost like whiskers. I thought there was whiskers in my drills and it turned out it was just like scrap plastic um, from the drills, you know. So there was a lot of really long, slender, whisker-like trash. There wasn't so much um, odd shapes or, you know, broken pieces or things like that. It was this odd whisker scrapping. Um, okay. And for single placers, you're being warned now. This, the areas through here where there's confetti, it is super confetti super confetti like super mega confetti in the confetti heavy areas the kind that kind of makes you want to go insane uh and then the color blocking all the black that you see throughout here especially on the on the two edges mega mega color blocking i know it doesn't look a lot maybe to you guys you know here but if you if you were in the trenches here oh my gosh hours and hours and hours of placing these black drills all throughout the diamond paint. Oh, <laughs> oh. Um, so especially for me being a single placer, um, you know, I manually placed every drill. I did bust out a multi-placer. I broke, I broke down and I bust out the multi-placer and it just was not working out for me. My hands were shaking too bad and I couldn't get, keep my line straight. And I spent more time straightening than I did actually placing. And I just found for me, it was faster to single place. Uh, might not be the case for everyone, but that was the case for me. So I ended up, you know, going back to multi or to single placing, but I did try multi-placing and it just, uh, just wasn't for me. So yeah, all the black you see, oh, so much black. Um, and then, uh, I did have a couple boo-boo pucker moments with some of the predominant colors. I did not bring them in here to show you. I'm just going to ask you to take my word for it. There were five colors that, um, literally had maybe a dozen to two dozen 
of that color left and they were some of the greens and some of the yellows uh those were scary moments i i was nervous about that but i got it done um and honestly i think part of the reason I was spared from running out to, uh, and not having enough drills on one particular color was because on two, on two particular colors is because I subbed some special drills in and I'll tell you about those in a minute. But this came dangerously close to running me out of five colors. So also something to be weary of. And that's it for our cons, you guys. Now for the pros. This canvas is true to size and I appreciate that. You guys know, um, you know, how I kind of feel about that. I really dislike when I'm sold a diamond painting of a certain size and then it turns out that the border it takes up half of the drill field uh, instead of giving me a true to size canvas. This is true to size and so that gets a pro from me. Uh, the clarity of the image for this size of diamond painting uh, Sundown and I and Al too all felt that this turned out looking really really good. We're very very happy with the end result because you can see the the intricate details. You can see what everything is. You can see you know the the wheel around here and the you know ivy the and clovers that go around the side. You can see the star symbol in the in the center and just everything about this w is clear at a viewing distance and we were very happy with that um the canvas was very sticky so i didn't have any problems with drills slip sliding or um not wanting to stick with the exception of the popping issue uh we I guess you can consider this a pro, although it is kind of just like personal opinion. We all really liked the imagery of this. And uh, so that kind of works in the favor of this diamond painting. And again, uh, with the exception of uh, F, R, and K all kind of being a little similar and clumped together and in the greener areas here, um, everything was very clear and easy to read on the canvas. So there's that. Um, those were my positives. And then for special notes, I just wanted to say that uh, while I did do this completion for you guys, it was also a special surprise for Sundown. Back in December, he did a 23andMe situation and got his results and found out that he does descend from Celtic Viking, uh, hence hence the tattoo situation here, um, that we both got with some, uh, you know, Irish influence, Viking influence and Celtic influence here. And so, uh, that part of his heritage is, you know, new to him, confirmed with him, to him, uh, through DNA and exciting to him. And so when I saw that I had this in my inventory and it was this March Irishy time of year. I really wanted to do this for him as well. And, um, and I thought how perfect, how perfect I can do this for you guys for the season and also for him. And he absolutely loves the end result. So yay, <laughs> bonus, bonus. And this for sure is going up on the walls ASAP. I can tell you that. And um, the other note I had is that I did add ABs. So there was a color in here. It was a brown color. Um, so you'll find it kind of around here and just interlaced throughout here that I had the exact same color in squares, but in the AB version. And so I did add ABs and what I did is I poured my, I didn't have enough to do the whole um, diamond painting in ABs in that color. So I poured the few that I had and into the container and I shook it up with the regulars so that it mixed in. And I just randomly, you know, as I was going, it was random, whether it was going to be the base color or the AB version. So you'll see ABs sprinkled throughout here in one of the colors. And I did also have some square glow in the dark in another one of the yellow colors. So uh, where you see some of the lighter yellow here, those are actually yellow glow in the darks. Yay! But um, I will put a picture of this diamond painting from about six to seven feet away so you can see what it looks like at a viewing distance. 
Okay, and um, I guess as some final notes, I wanted to tell you what I used to complete this diamond painting. Again, this time no ruler. I did not have one in the squares, um, like a squares style that was measured correctly to match this diamond painting. So I did use the checkerboard method. If you're not familiar with the what the checkerboard method is, I encourage you to go ask Dr. Google. He can tell you. Um, it is a method of doing diamond paintings predominantly used when you're doing square diamond paintings to help keep everything lined up and locked in place as you go. But I've used it on rounds with some success as well. So you can really use the, the checkerboard method with rounds or squares. So if you're someone who doesn't like rulers or uh, doesn't want rulers or maybe, you know, but you kind of like the effect of a ruler, how it keeps everything linear, try the checkerboard method. I encourage you to get, at least try it, see if it's something for you. And then you can say, you know, you have that much more experience in diamond painting. You've experienced a technique uh, of diamond painting and decided if it's for you or not. It is kind of fun to do once in a while. It turns your diamond painting almost into like a puzzle. So it's kind of a twofer. Um, so yeah, I did use the uh, checkerboard method, no actual physical ruler. I did use this little iron thing that I got on Timu to help try to push down the popping drills, you know, and try to s smooth them out and, and, and get them shifted, maybe fill in some of the gaps, keep some of them from trying to jump up and pop out. And I just kind of used it like this. Um, you know, arguments can be made that it kind of scuffs the drills because this is a hard little plastic iron situation. Uh, it's fine. I'm fine with it. You might, you know, want to use a little, I call them steam rollers, but those little roller things, but you know, I'm cool with this. So yeah. Oh my gosh. But I did this every night, every night I would go over the entire completed portion of the diamond painting, however big or small it was to try to flatten them down. And I'll be darned if by morning I didn't come out and find some popping out of place. So when I'm done with this, I'm going to be, uh, I'm sealing this right away. I did use my Taurus pen from Patriotic Team with my own tips in here. I did use my Miawa Alien Putty and uh, I did use my Ephemera 3D green tray in the new uh, prototype style that uh, you guys, if, if the video is not out yet, it will be soon. Uh, so I will show you all about that and talk about the features. But those are the tools that I use to complete this. And uh, since we're not going to do a kit down, you guys want to seal with me? Let's seal. All right. So, oh, got schmutz on it. Look at that. How does that happen? I don't have a shutting dog. I don't, I don't know how that happens. All right. So... Let me just squeeze the, the goo. I kind of like to do it in smaller sections so I don't over goo the canvas. You know what I mean? I don't want to oversaturate anything and have, have it build up and, and maybe get mucky. Uh, it is a fear of mine, so I don't want to even risk it. So I just do it uh, smaller sections here. And uh, it does dry clear, so even if I get it on the tape, uh, around the edges you won't see it when it's done so I'm fine with that if it gets on the edges and I just kind of brush it through I do this particular sealant has a sponge tip um, I have used ones without but I just find the sponge tip is easier and it helps as you saw maybe if I didn't edit it out uh, it does help clean up some lint you know, the, the sponge kind of picks up any lint or hairs or whatever that might be lingering about on the surface. So here I'm just putting some more goo on. Um, I am starting with like rubbing it in vertically. And when I, when I'm done, I'm going to go back over, not adding any more goo unless I, you know, feel it necessary, but, um, I am going to go back through and go horizontally just to make sure that we get all the cracks all the cacks all the cracks and crevices 
So while I'm doing this, let me ask you guys, what did you think of this diamond painting? Do you like it? Um, goodbye, March, right? I mean, this is, this is a farewell to March. See you again next year. I hope. Um, I mean, I'd, I don't think it's leaving the calendar, but you know what I mean? Like, uh, hope, hope to visit again next March. Oh, I meant to tell you another fun fact. I guess I had forgotten that I bought this diamond painting in this size and that it was in my stash because then at some point, I don't know which came first, but at some point I also have purchased this exact diamond painting from this exact company in the size uh, 105 centimeters by 70 centimeters. Uh, in case you're curious, that is a 42 inch by 28 inch. 36 inches is three feet, right? Um, so, and 48 is four feet. So it's about three and a half, 42 inches, that's what, three and a half feet um, by 28 inches, which is over two feet. So this, it's like three and a half by uh, two and a half feet-ish. I'm sure my math is wrong and I'm sure somebody's gonna correct me in the comments, have fun. Um, you go for it. I didn't go to school uh, for as a math major so you know whatever um but yeah the how crazy is that like I have and it's also 48 colors and square drills so I may do that in the future and do a side-by-side -side comparison to see how big of a difference does it really make having a bigger canvas same company same image same amount of colors same drill shape just a much bigger size, about twice the size, almost, almost twice the size. I'm interested. Um, I just have to find the time to do it. But when I do do it, there's that do do again, every video. Oh my gosh. When I do do it, I will include you guys in on the process and we'll do a side by side and see does size matter? <laughs> I, sorry, so many jokes just flooded my brain when that came out of my mouth. Um, ignore that. But yeah, we'll find out. Does size really matter? Is bigger really better? All right, you guys, that's it for this one. I'm gonna go ahead and kit down. So what's left is the mess. And that's for me, not for you. I'm gonna take care of that. I'm not going to make you stick around for it. Thanks for coming and hanging out with me. Let me know in the comments below. What do you think of this diamond painting? Do we like it? Do you like it? Are you surprised? Surprise! A March, you know, bonus finish for you guys. I hope you like it. Um, and yeah, I mean, I did feel like it it fit into the the spirit of the channel with the pagan elements. So a little dark, um, you know, a little darkness creeped in there and all the 310, that was a lot of dark. <laughs> but yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one. Stay naughty.